FSD is crazy. And when you look at the numbers, some of them are downright nuts. And that's the whole premise of this FSD's nuts. That's what we're talking about. I've got <laughs> Herbert here to share with me. I, I do not know what's so funny because that's the name of my spreadsheet. FSD's nuts. What Herbert? I don't understand the giggling in the comments. Let me know what Herbert's finding so darn amusing. <laughs> So this is a spreadsheet that I made a couple okay. months back, and yeah. it was for the business case for a three or Y as a robo taxi. Well, this has all changed. This has all changed. So let's start by talking about the purchase price. When the robo taxi comes out, what are we talking? Should we put this in at thirty thousand instead, mm -hmm. or twenty five? I, I think thirty is appropriate for day one. Yeah. A question though is that he said thirty thousand. But mm -hmm. is that include FSD or does that not that include FSD? That is the question. I am of the mind that FSD will be a subscription on top of it, which is required. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people have said, that's terrible. Who would ever agree to that? Mm -hmm. Businesses. Businesses do that all the time. If you buy a mega pack, you also buy sense. a yeah. lifetime of maintenance. Exactly. So over the course of, now we're saying 150,000 miles over five years, 30,000 a year. I think that's quite reasonable. Mm -hmm. Maintenance. There's very little maintenance on this car. Uh, we're talking tires, and I don't believe it's going to have those 18 or 21 inch tires that it had at the demo. I think it'll have 17s because they're mm. cheap and they're mm. cheap. They're long lasting. They're durable. Um, I'm going to say that this maintenance figure is too high. I'm going to drop it to, I mean, is 300 a year too, too, too low, too high? What do you think? <laughs> I have not spent a single dollar for my 2020 Model 3, but I not think even tires. Fair. I think it's fair because this is going to be a, a you know robo taxi. It's going to have all sorts of things happen to it. People might rip seats. They might uh, have parties in there. You might need sure. to you know dents. Well, those you know. would be hopefully build to the to the rider, but mm -hmm. maintenance tires. Um, I Good don't point. think you're going to have brakes to wear down, but yeah. tires, just tires. Um, yeah. And the nice thing about 17s is you can hit a curb every now and then, and it doesn't destroy the wheel. Mm. So the cost of ownership is at 21 cents a mile, and that's assuming it dies at 150, which it wouldn't, but maybe you would just sell it at that point. And if you sell it for 7,500 bucks, you only paid 30,000, you've driven it quite aggressively. And I've had people say, no, it's going to last a million. It's a public transport vehicle. It's not going to last a million. It's going to get some abuse. Yeah, um, that's and it's not going to dodge potholes. 30,000 so, miles per year. That's conservative. Yeah, I think it is conservative. And I think at the end of it, you could get 7,500 bucks for it, which would only be a half penny off. So yeah. not the biggest deal. Now on this one, we've got to make some changes here, my friend, because it is not getting four miles uh, to the kilowatt hour. The number we heard was... Wasn't it 5.5 mm -hmm. or 6? Mm -hmm. I think it was 5.5. And that, I'm telling you right now, is sandbagged. That is absolutely, wow. there is yeah. no way. The Model 3 driven cautiously can get you to 5. This is going to be 6. But mm -hmm. we'll leave it at 5.5 because the numbers are already going to get a little ridiculous. Cost of juice, even public juice, is mm -hmm. only 9 pennies a mile. So we're only up to 23 cents, 30 cents, split the difference, 26 cents a mile. That's real close to the number Elon was talking about. Mm -hmm. Now we've got to talk about the ongoing cost. I had put registration in at 400. I think that's too low. I just remembered many states like the one you and I live in have a EV surcharge. In addition well, it's, to our... It's, it's expensive at the first year, like a thousand bucks, and then it falls over years. Oh, that's right. You're in the Tri-County area. You're paying for the light rail. I am not in the Tri-County area. My my first year tabs were, I don't know, 450 or something. So mm -hmm. I apologize. I don't mean to brag. But, <laughs> but they like were quite, said, though, it should quite fall low. in the next several years. But yeah, keep going. But, but I think f the right. EV surcharge alone is 250. Yeah. So I think at least 500 a year mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. more reasonable. That only adds three uh, two pennies over the five years. Mm -hmm. and three pennies if you're looking at a 10-year pro prospect. And the reason I'm putting a 10-year in here is because what if what if I'm not renting it out? What if it's my car? What mm -hmm. if I, it's just me driving myself around? That 150000 that's a 10-year project instead of a five-year. Insurance, I think I went too high. I think this insurance figure is too high. I think yearly, 
it's probably going to be more like 1200 what do you think you know that is uh, it's probably what it is today but that should change right because if they if it truly works and there's less accidents than humans and the cost of the car is so you know much cheaper right because it's designed to be low cost eventually if if tesla's covering it this insurance could be a lot lower too if, if you notice now people are discovering it today if you buy tesla insurance in a state that Tesla insurance provides you and you own a Tesla and you drive it 90 plus percent in FSD and you're good FSD, the drive, if you put, just put on FSD, your cost for insurance has will fall significantly to, the, to actually reduce the cost of the FSD itself. So, you know what I mean? Like they, they already yeah. are reducing insurance based on FSD usage because they know that it's safer. My insurance is, I want to say, Oh, uh, like a hundred and thirty a month for a Model Y, and Progressive assumes it's meat driven. So can I drop this all the way to a hundred bucks a I, month? I will. I don't know because I'll tell you that the difference is that uh, Robo Taxi is going to be driven many more miles than you do than I do. That's I use mm. I use Metro Mile now owned by Lemonade. And they do it based on miles because they don't have the actual data. But more miles driven, late night driving, those have higher chances of insurance. Of, mm. of, of mm. And, you know, reasons. I don't know how Tesla's will work on because they'll know. <laughs> well, I we're going to split FSD, the difference. Though, yeah, yeah go, we're going to okay. split the difference. Uh, it was was 24. I said 12. We're split the difference. It's sure. 18 uh, over. Yeah. So that's only another 12 cents a mile. I think that's yeah. reasonable. Now, cleaning, I got a lot of people pushing back on me saying yeah. it doesn't cost 3600 a year to clean a car. Mm -hmm. I'm like, guys, that's like less than 10 bucks a day. Yes, it does. Because even if you're cleaning it yourself, your time is worth money. And if you have five cars, that's a job. And if you have a hundred cars, you don't have the hours in the day anymore. You need to hire someone. So 10 bucks a day, I think is extremely reasonable. Yeah, the question cleaning. is whether or not Tesla's network is going to have their automated cleaning. You saw it presented. I've seen yeah. the, I've seen the uh, patents. And I actually happened to be during the event, I happened to be as I'm standing there waiting for the event to start, which I was standing for at least an hour and a half. The guy behind me was a Tesla employee who worked on that patent. He said, oh, I saw your show where you guys covered the patent on the cleaning. I did that. I worked on that and I was part of the CyberCab team. And I was like, whoa, he was so proud that it's actually coming. So I, I, what I got from that conversation with them is that this is real. This isn't just mm. a patent. This is actually, and they showed it as a video. So what the patent actually says is that if I put my car into the network, the car will first go to uh, cleaning, then it'll go do the rides. Then when I want it back home, it will go and get cleaned to get back to me. So that, that removes any issue about me having to do the cleaning, right? Now this allows any person like, you know, to put in their Tesla into the network and also the robo taxis are going to be part of it. So I don't know to what extent that automated cleaning is just a nice add on, or is it something that is, is, is part of the whole program or it's not at the very least, it would be factored into the mileage, uh, mm. the, um, sorry, the charging cost. Um, and now that you mention it, if you're going to be, you, yeah, nothing's free in life. So there's going to be a cost yep. for clean. I mean, if they're putting in $50,000 industrial robots to do the, the cleaning, it's not going to be free. Um, hopefully it'll be reasonable, but I still think $10 a day mm -hmm. is, you know, well, okay. what do you think? What number should I put here? I have no idea. Like, so All it's right. my cost. If it's my car, what am I going to do? If I'm going to clean it myself, there'll be zero. But if I'm going to get somebody to pay for it, I, it's uh, not zero. Bucks. Your time is worth money. My time's worth 10 bucks a day is pretty reasonable at this point. Yeah. Sure. And what I did is for the 10 year, I put it at zero because if it's your car and yeah. you're not leasing it out, it's not a business clean your own damn car. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. And there will be people I am confident who will buy this, who need the mobility. I have viewers who have said this will be soon a critical element to my continued independence. Um, fantastic. So what that means is the cost per mile, uh, is in the 40 cents ish range over the life mm -hmm. of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, you'll get a, half penny penny back if you could sell it for fifteen thousand after one hundred and fifty thousand miles maybe you could that fifteen thousand uh would take a penny off these two figures a full penny 
So with that said, my question for you, Herbert, is at what price per mile would you no longer own a car? Would you say, you know what? Uh, I don't need a car. I don't want a car. I'm going car free. I'll just, I'll just tool around. So my daughter just moved to Burbank in Los Angeles, just got a job there, set up an apartment just three weeks ago. And we were like discussing and debating, do we buy you a car or do you just go Uber everywhere? Mm. And her office, her work from her apartment is so close. We're talking like, you know, five miles away, 10 miles, somewhere in between there, very close. But the cost of Uber every day is, it gets close to the point of, well, why don't you just put that in financing of a car? Yeah. <laughs> we ended up buying her Tesla Model 3, an old 2020. Um, at the end of the day, it's still more expensive, of course, with insurance and registration and all that stuff. But, um, it, it, you know, that was a discussion we were having. If, if that's an Uber, if the price of that ride is even just, just a few dollars less, if it was a half the cost, I would have already said, no problem. So uh, at a dollar, it, maybe a dollar a mile, maybe. Yeah. So like we were talking in another show, right? We think that a cost of an Uber is probably around two to three dollars per mile. Minimum, if it's at a dollar yeah. per mile already, for sure, uh, I would have switched already for sure. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's just like. Well, and yeah. your daughter's only going to be in Burbank for a limited time and not even necessarily the entire school year or the, the entire calendar year. The the ownership cost is a lot more than people realize. Um, On your show the other day, folks, go back and watch it. Uh, you you played a clip of Connor talking about, Connor, what's his name? Cunningham. Cunningham, talking about the cost of ownership today on average is already 65 cents a mile. That's just the cost. And if you're getting this, you're a third cheaper for a car you don't have to drive. Um, and I think even that 65 cents might be a little on the forgiving side. Uh, I think it might be higher than that. Uh, but especially when you buy a lot of new cars suffer very sincere and severe uh, depreciation, like drive it off the lot and lose. We saw a picture posted on X the other day, uh, the other day of a Ford Raptor uh, with a $25,000 market adjustment on it. Uh, by the way, drive it off the lot. That 25 is gone. That is not, that did not add value to your vehicle in any uh, way possible. So if, if you're saying that at a dollar a mile, so this same car would then be, you know, 150,000 over the course of its life, if it's 150, uh, well, and you don't get to sell it, but it doesn't matter again, that's only, you know, half a penny, penny a mile in the equation. Um, and there is a possibility that you could do it cheaper because if it is only 46 cents a mile and you run it 150,000 miles, you're making 80 grand off this car over five years at a buck a mile. What do you think of that? That's without any surge pricing or anything. <laughs> How do you feel about making $80,000 on your $30,000 right? car? It's, it's no longer an expense. Uh, when would I switch? not buy a car it's it's uh it's the the fact that i'm gonna make money on this now so yeah. why wouldn't i get into this immediately if i could yeah the, and, only part, the other thing that i yeah. wanted to talk about is that people always say take a look at uber's market share and lyft's market share this is the ride hailing market share <laughs> that's the price point of what they're offering today like that taxi market share but if you remove if you undercut that significantly half and it looks like that, you know, Elon's talking about actually doing 10% 10 of what it is now. Instead of two bucks a mile, it's going to be like 20 cents a mile, 40 cents a mile. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, it's a completely different world you're, you're living in. Hmm. Completely different world. Like the market for that will explode to everybody <laughs> using it all the time. Now, if you have, you know, immediate access, it's got to be like when I come in right now, when I'm in my location, I can press an Uber or Lyft and I can get somebody here in three minutes. That is because I'm obviously in a dense city center kind of thing, but it, it's like, um, yeah. So I don't even worry about it. Like I, every time I need a new Uber Lyft, I just open up and get one in two, three minutes. That's great. That's what's going to work. So now my, yeah, my, so then the question on these numbers to make these numbers make sense is, is FSD included? 
Is it mm-hmm. something you that is in addition to the thirty thousand? Is it a monthly fee that would change it? But that eighty thousand in profit we just talked about over the course of uh, sixty months would only reduce your profit by six thousand mm-hmm. dollars if it's a hundred bucks, and if it's two hundred bucks, it reduce it by twelve thousand. Not crazy, not a terrible. Say, investment. Are you making money or losing money on a purchase of a vehicle? Well, right, yeah. And, uh, and the, the, well, but you know, I would send it out and I would only use it when I need it. Why exactly. just, just hail a different one. They all look the same. What's exactly. the, why do you need your car back? Keep it at work. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's, uh, interesting guys. Uh, I do want to hear your feedback on what I'm missing. Uh, what's too high, what's too low because it's crazy. It's insane. FSD's nuts is what I'm saying <laughs> loud and proud, you guys. <laughs> Leave it in the comments. Stay tuned and juicy. I cannot wait to hear from you, clever robots, on the next one. And check out Herbert, see what he's up to. He does great stuff, and I love him.